시청자 여러분 안녕하세요. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. This is Prostodontics on Friday Live, which addresses different steps of implant prostodontic treatment in an easy and interesting manner, as well as the side effects. Today, we have Dr. Cho Yongjin of Seoul Deep Rooted Dental Clinic. Today's lecture is under the topic, we're going to help you to identify the implant in question. Greetings. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for appearing today and providing support to our program. Your lecture is in line with the implant finding service provided by Korean Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology. I'm sure a lot of dentists are interested in this topic. Could you briefly explain about your lecture? Today I'm going to talk about situations so where we come across a patient so with implants placed from different dental clinics. At times patients come with a finished prosthesis but at times we need to redo them. We need to understand what company and what product the implant body is. Rather than thinking of it as a lecture, I want to provide guidance as to how to find the right implant. This is something we come face to face every single day, so I have high expectations and I think it will be very interesting. I look forward to your lecture. To those watching the program from the dental site, you can participate real time via the chat to leave your questions, have them answered, and you'll be able to try your chances as winning Starbucks coffee coupons. We're going to choose best question and the winner will receive three Starbucks coffee coupons. Learn about your implant prosthodontics and win coffee coupons. I look forward to your keen interest. Let us begin Dr. Cho Yongjin's lecture. Greetings, I'm Dr. Cho Yongjin of Seoul Deep Rooted Dental Clinic. Today my lecture's title is Ask Whatever, I'm going to find you that implant. This is to intrigue you in addressing a prosthodontic treatment to patients with implants that I have not placed. How to find the implant? I'm going to talk about how to discern these implants. This is in line with the implant finding service provided by Calmi, and I'm going to talk about the cases using that service. There are ways to address old implants. As a practitioner in the past, the patients who were looking for implanted treatments had no implants in their oral cavity. At times, you need to extract in the missing area, this is, would be the initial x-ray. You would look at the clinical situation and come up with treatment plan and plan for a certain number of implants in a certain area. You would do surgery and go through prostodontic phase to provide implanted prosthesis. This is the final x-ray and clinical image. In the old days, this was the general implant treatment sequence. However, these days, the patients looking for implanted treatment or those who come with certain discomforts, it's not easy to see people with no implants. Patients may have received implant treatment in the past. For instance, they may have had multiple implants placed, some may have fallen out, or there may have been issues with existing implant. The prosthesis can be damaged or failed. A lot of patients come with these kind of chief complaints. The percentage has increased. If you look over here in the first image on the other side, it is functioning normally, but in the area where teeth are missing, there is an implant here. 
If I were to do treatment in number 47, I need to determine whether to provide prosthesis again for the mesial implant prosthesis. If you look at the second x-ray image, implant has been placed and the prosthesis looks normal, but probably I would need to do prosthodontic treatment again along with the sites in question. If you look at the third image, the fixed hybrid bridge prosthesis was fractured. I think I'd be able to save the implant, but the prosthesis failed. We can see these kind of situations very frequently. In my dental clinic, although I have not done surgery, maybe I would need to provide prosthodontic treatment to these patients. After having done surgery, sometimes patients move to dental clinics. The implant may be okay, but prosthesis may need to be redone. Even though prosthodontic treatment has been provided, you can see that the superior portion has fractured, so it needs to be redone. In this case, among the implants placed, a few have lost osseointegration, therefore it needs to be removed. And due to prosthodontic complication, at times you need to refabricate prosthesis. Also, among the implants received, at times it needs to be removed. Overall restoration may need to be redone. If you look at the images, as shown, the implants here cannot be used, therefore they need to be removed and a full restoration needed to be provided again. Since 2000s, implant treatment has become more widespread. Implant treatment has been provided widely since about 20 years ago, and if you look at different statistics, by 2022, implanted treatment number will exceed 1 million cases annually. In 2018, if you look at the annual report from Strauman Group, in Korea, the number of patients who have received implant treatment Per population of 10,000 compared with other advanced nations, the numbers are really significant and it's number one across the world. With increased implanted treatment compared with other treatment, because the number of treatment have increased, the side effects have also increased. According to Korea Consumer Agency, if you look at the complaints raised in relation to the implanted treatment in Accordance with the insurance policy, the biggest is related to complications, and this is followed by the need to change dental clinics in the middle of treatment. The patient may move, leading to the need to change dental clinics, but at times the dental clinic may close. Due to many reasons, patients need to change dental clinics. Therefore, cases may arise where a patient may receive implant treatment from one clinic and then receive prosthodontic treatment in another one. I've added the poster of Saving Private Ryan because the situation is very similar if you have to pick up from whatever the previous dentist has left off. Doing prosthodontic treatment again, I think it's very similar to this movie. At times, you can just provide prosthodontic treatment again, but at times, it may require periodontal plastic surgery and it may need to do regeneration procedure for, to compensate for bone loss. Also, you may need to place additional implant to provide accurate treatment. At times, you may have to remove existing implant and place new ones. Let me show you an x-ray. Among the images shown earlier, this was removed and implant was placed again. It was connected to the adjacent implant and prosthodontic treatment was provided. We need to know the type of adjacent implant to be able to provide a prosthesis. In this case, the existing implant was very close to the root of natural tooth and removing this would have caused a very negative impact on the adjacent bone. Therefore, implant was placed distal to it and prosthesis was provided.
In this case, the implant position was not very favorable, and periodontally it was very unfavorable. You can see the apex lesion implants were removed and new implants were placed. In the case of lower, the position is not very good, but the prosthesis was fabricated once again for this patient. I still recall this case. The patient received treatment in Japan, and the implant was made by a Japanese manufacturer. We could not find the components. One failed in osteointegration, and as for the remaining two, abutment and prosthesis was refabricated. In this case, the osteointegration was very good, but the superior prosthesis was problematic. Therefore, prosthesis was fabricated once again. This is also a case of prosthesis refabrication. First, you need to make a diagnosis whether you'll be able to use the existing implant or whether it needs to be removed. You need to look at patient's chief complaint and any discomforts that the patient is experiencing. Using this, you need to determine whether you need to remove or use the existing implant. You need to be able to assess whether the implant position or direction is accurate or whether the screw hole can be utilized to remove the implant. The amount of bone loss should be considered. If you intend to use the existing implant, you need to know exactly what it is from which manufacturer and which lineup. Also, whether it's in production or whether it has been now obsolete. You need to figure out whether there is digital library or whether the manufacturer continues to provide components. If you cannot identify the implant, then you would not be able to use the abutment, and if the connection is not compatible, then uh, unfortunately you would have to remove the implant and place a new one. At times, you may not be able to get your hands on the components, but be able to reuse the abutment and provide the prosthesis once again using that. If possible, using the existing implant would be more favorable to the patients. If you can utilize the existing implant, you need to identify what implant it is from which manufacturer. Let me share with you a simple case. This is a 72-year-old male patient in number 36. Between number 37, the marginal ridge is quite starkly different. Number 27 needed to be extracted. Number 27 was extracted and restoration needed to be provided because number 37 was extruded. The number 36 implant height is quite low compared to adjacent teeth. The marginal ridge height is not right. Therefore, I decided to provide the prosthesis on number 37 once again. The patient remembered which dental clinic he received the implant from. So I asked the patient to find out which implant was used from which manufacturer. I looked at the x-ray and I loosened the prosthesis to check. You can see that this is an internal type of implant. The abutment and the prosthesis is connected internally, internal submerged type implant. This is not a hex type, but there's a three lobe. It's tri-lobe structure internal type. When I remove the prosthesis on the abutment, you can see three lobes here. In 2014, the Korean Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology released a booklet about what you need to know about dental implants. There is a sample database of about 112 implants. If you look over here, there's trilobe, and the data is similar to the case that I've shown you earlier, and it says it is implant easy plus implant from company M. This book is also in Austin's library. Yes, this is it. Yes. 
As shown in the cover, there are many x-ray images of implants of different manufacturers. Therefore, it can be very helpful in identifying implants. The one that you're mentioning, it's in page 74, yes. Platform image and x-ray image are included. I think this is a very meaningful book. If you expand on the oral image, there is trilobe structure. I've asked the patient to get the information. The patient copied the chart. It says EZ plus from M. It's the best scenario if the patient can get the information of implant manufacturer and product name. You do not need to look further. You can just make an inquiry to the manufacturer. It's the simplest way. I've made an inquiry to the manufacturer. The product is no longer in production, but I could get impression coping and analog. Therefore, I bought them. Using implant level pickup impression coping, impression was taken, custom abutment was designed, custom abutment was fabricated, and zirconia crown was fabricated. As shown on the left, the prostodontic treatment was completed. This is before and after treatment. Marginal ridge height is adjusted and the antagonist was restored at the same time. I took a standard x-ray image after restoration and when you compare the image with the book, you can see that it is internal structure as shown on the x-ray image. The shape of the thread if you look from the right, it is exactly the same. The traits of the implant, it is internal structure. And in the coronal area, the rim is slightly thicker. It is thicker than the screw pitch. And you can see the same structure on the x-ray image on the right. In the lower right, the platform image. It's also the same as the image taken from oral cavity. When you have doubts, you can compare with the clinical image and x-ray image in the book and identify the implant placed in the patient. If a patient with an implant placed from a different dental clinic comes in, how can I identify this implant? I'm going to talk about the methods to narrow down on implants. One of the most useful sites is called whatimplantisthat.com. It's an overseas site. If you go to the web page, you can see this screen. If you input information of the implant on the left, relevant data can be pulled up. Over here, you can select a company and also select information on the coronal side, such as the interface of flange, color, micro threading, implant to taper, and thread shape. If you insert these conditions, the relevant implant bodies will be selected. If you look at the company, if you don't know the name, you can choose any company. There is a 3M, SB. There are many notable names like Biomed 3i, Chemlock, Brony Mark, Astra Tech. Interface, whether it's external, internal, or unique interface. As for flange, whether there is a flange or not, the color, micro thread, taper, and thread type, whether it's reverse buttress, round, square, V shaped. Another important structure is on the apex side, whether there's a hole, whether it's open, oblong, hole, or whether there's groove. You can choose different information. On the left, I chose internal interface with color, non-tapered body, threaded, V-shaped thread, flat apex implant. These are the conditions that I've inserted. You can see the different implants from 
manufacturers such as BioMedI then supply Noble BioCare. The implant products are mostly from overseas implant companies. Uh, there are partially Korean products uh, such as that from Austin. However, it's not updated swiftly. Most of the Korean companies are not listed here. Only most notable companies are listed and not the entire product lines are incorporated and there's a lot of data missing. If you cannot find the implant you're looking for in the basic database and if you want to tailor your order, you need to send various information to this company and this website will find the implant for you. If you look at the guide on the left, you need to send these data. If you insert the data and make payment with credit card, then they find the implant. The cost is about $175, so about over 200,000 won in Korea. They find the implant for you. Second is osiosource.com. It's very similar to the previously mentioned uh, whatimplantisthat.com. The quality is slightly different. The manufacturers, abutment connection, type body, shape, thread, these traits need to be inserted as well. If you look at the abutment connection type, there are so many different options. Yes, most of them are external, internal, and internal octagon. They take up the lion's share, but if you look below, there's so many other options such as external octagon, external spline, internal Morse taper. There are so many different types of internal connection. Just with x-ray, it's quite difficult to specify which. Another important trait is you have to choose the implant platform color. Implant product with color coding, you cannot see it on x-ray, but clinically, if you do oral inspection, if you can provide color-coded information, it can be of great help in finding the implant. In osteosource.com, I've chosen Austin Implant as the manufacturer and internal connection as abutment connection. When I insert the conditions, awesome products are displayed TS2, TS3, TS3 narrow. Preet.com also provided these database, but recently when I went in, it does not open data. It just uh, receives consultation. You can download Preet app and send an email. It can provide information as to which implant it is, and it also sells relevant components. The screen displayed is a personal blog. The blogger is a Japanese person. Dr. Tajima Kyoshi used to work in AOI International Dental Hospital Maxillofacial Facial Department. This is a database of 102 implants, X-ray image, implant body image, and platform image have been uploaded on his blog. Partially it is open, but to have full access, you need to pay 2,350 yen. I also did not purchase it, so I was not able to see all 102. If you look at this site, the database is pretty well made. What I want to emphasize today is the identifying implant service provided by the Korean Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology. This service has been available since September 2018. First, it was a Kakao Talk Plus friend. Now, it's a Kakao Talk channel. 
based on the textbook, what you need to know about uh, dental implant. There are different uh, classification depending on external type, internal submerged type, and internal non-submerged type. We have accumulated a database of different types of implant, and the X-ray and platform images are included in the booklet. So it's the work started in 2013. It's been about 10 years. There's a lot of implant bodies not included in the textbook, but we have been continuing to gather data. We have even more number of implant information within the database and uh, we are prepared to provide answers to your questions. So this is an image included in the booklet. External type implant, internal submerged type implant, non-submerged type implant. Information is included in the booklet as mentioned. Some implants have color-coded platforms. If you provide information as to what color and what structure the implant is, then it would be of great help in identifying the implant in an easier manner. A total of 112 implants have been analyzed. 27 of them are external hex, 34 internal submerged hex, 27 internal submerged unique connection, 20 non-submerged type, and 4 miscellaneous types. A total of 112 types of implant information is included in the booklet. Can I ask you a question? Yes. At times, you may be able to successfully identify the implant, but because the implant system is no longer in production, at times it can be very difficult to find the components. In the past, I tried to look for components related to IMG implant, but it was no longer in production. It's no longer available. It's a German implant. I reached out to Germany. In Germany, human-related systems need to maintain components for 30 years even if it is no longer produced. I hope such regulation is put in place not just in Korea but in various countries across the world that produce implants requiring manufacturers to maintain parts for 30 years. This is something new to me. I think it's a very good system. It will be beneficial not only to the patients, but surgeons alike, if we can get the parts for over 30 years, unless the company disappears. If such system is put in place, be it mandatorily or voluntarily, it will be very beneficial. If it can be continuously provided, it will be great. Because we've taken a moment to entertain questions, so let's look at the chat screen. I'm sure there are a lot of questions raised. Let's look at the Q&A. I look forward to Dr. Jo Young-jin's lecture. Let's scroll down. daily attendance, at times you have no idea what the placed implant is and you need to identify it. In this case, how do you respond to the situation? Based on my knowledge, you use x-ray image and determine the type of implant and the manufacturer. Do you have such information? I think this question was raised early on, and I think this question was addressed as this person listened to the lecture. Yes, I'm explaining on this topic. How many implant companies can be searched? This was mentioned. I've mentioned that 112 different implants are included in the database, but actually, even more number of implants are included in the database these days. I cannot exactly pinpoint an exact number, but given that accurate information has been provided, 
95% of the time, if you make an inquiry, response can be provided. Ho Bang Men, I hope to see you more often, Dr. Cho Young Jin. Thank you. Ammonite, it's a different company, but apart from the method provided by Harry Bio, what kind of service does the Korean Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology provide? This is going to be explained. I have come across a patient with implant placed from another dental clinic. The x-ray image looks okay in the case of the crown, but the buccolingual bone resorption is severe and there's a bit of inflammation. What is the reason? Is this because of lack of attached gingiva? I think this is slightly off topic. I love dental. These days, we frequently come across patients who already have implants and we have to refabricate the prosthesis. If the implant itself is okay, do you solve the other issues for the patient? It's very difficult to identify the implant and to solve issues. I agree wholeheartedly. It's not the same as coming up with treatment plan and placing an implant and providing prosthesis. You have to salvage the implant already placed for the patient. Unless there is excessive bone loss and if it requires removal or if it is not advantageous for the patient to save that implant, except for these cases, I try to save the existing implant. Yes. Depending on the model, I think there are slight differences in crystal module. Is there a tip to differentiate by company? This is something I'm going to address in the latter part of my lecture these days. The most frequently used implant type is internal submerged type. The design, some implants have very characteristic uh, macro structure, but in a lot of cases, the designs are quite similar. It's very difficult to determine which implant it is at the thread or apex area. As Yong Yong has mentioned, there is a very fine difference in crystal module. This will be addressed in the latter part of my lecture. Not all implant companies exhibit traits, therefore, despite that, you cannot be 100% sure that it is of certain company's implant. I wish the Dental Association produces an app where if you put in the x-ray image of an implant, the name of the manufacturer as well as type of implant is automatically classified. It'll be the best. That's our ultimate goal. I think this is tough at the moment. In the end, AI will play a part, but in order for AI to be applied, the data amount needs to be significant and the x-ray image provided needs to be excellent to make this into a reality. Do well if you need to refabricate prosthesis. If there's a slight implantitis, what do you do? Do you fabricate prosthesis again or do you remove and place new implant? I remove the existing implant if there's about half of marginal bone loss, but if there's about half or one third of marginal bone loss, it becomes harder to decide. I think this question is about when you remove the existing implant. I believe I need to come up with another lecture using this topic. If it is half, it's kind of vague. If there's no clinical symptoms and if there's no acute inflammation on the gingiva, even if there is, 
if it can be addressed through resective surgery and if the prosthesis is working, I'm going to control the inflammation and I'm going to keep the existing implant. I hope you come up with a lecture on this topic. TS also has a similar question. If there is implantitis, when doing retreatment, when do you remove the existing implant? Up to what level does the bone loss need to occur? When do you place new implants? I think this is the same question. So we'll entertain more questions at the end during the Q&A session. Dr. Jo, please continue on with your lecture. As mentioned in the questions, I'm going to introduce the implant identification service provided by the Korean Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Implantology. I'm sure all, some of you know it, but if you search the Korean Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Implantology, in the past this was a Kakao Talk Plus friend, but now it's a channel now. If you search the Korea Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Implantology channel, you can find it. There's about 1,400 friends right now at the channel. If you go to the channel, you can start a chat. If you provide the X-ray image of the implant as well as other information, The task force team will provide what implant it is based on the images provided. These chats are all questions raised by different dentists and Kaomi has provided responses to that. You need to be a full member of the Korean Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Implantology to be able to use the service. If you look at the examples of chat, one person has cropped the panoramic x-ray image. This implant is Ostem Implant SS2 implant. In the case of implants with specific traits, you'd be able to identify implants just with x-ray image, but in most cases with just a panoramic image, it is difficult to identify the implant. Therefore, as shown in the middle, you need to send a panoramic image as well as the radiographic image taken perpendicular to the long axis of the implant. The standard x-ray image needs to be sent in order for us to be able to identify the implant. Additionally, images of the connection or if there's color, you need to take the image of that as well. Giving us the additional information would help us in identifying the implant quicker. If you want a quick and accurate answer, providing many information would help. In the Kakao Talk channel, the chat for identify the implant. There are 17 uh, directors, including me. When we first provide a service in 2018, I was the IT director. Currently, I'm not the IT director. Dr. Jong Hyun Park is now the IT director and he's putting in a lot of effort. Before him, Dr. Jung Min Kim worked as the IT director for two years and has contributed significantly. When questions are raised, at times we know exactly what implant it is immediately. In other cases, in this chat, we discuss over what implant it is. If we come to a consensus, so we deliver the information to the person who made the inquiry. When uh, we were providing the service, one of my associates told me that there was a Call Me Plus friend service. This person had no idea that I was the one working on it and told me that AI must be working on this. When X-ray image was submitted, Answers were provided immediately, so I told that person that uh, we have a chat where we discuss what implant it is, so the person who brought up the topic was really surprised. As shown on the left, if you send many 
X-ray images, we base our decisions based on the booklet. We classify whether it is external, internal submerged type or non-submerged type. If it is external type, we look at the size of the hex, height, platform color, and micro thread. In the case of internal non-submerged type, you need to tell us the color shape, whether it's parallel or tapered. In the case of internal submerged type, you need to tell us the coronal thickness, apical shape, micro thread, position, and size. These information are all gathered to find the right implant. This is a case where such inquiry came in. The x-ray image was very well taken. The information we can glean from this implant. You need to look at the density as well as the contrast, but if you look very carefully, the abutment goes into the implant body. This is an internal type. This is not Morse taper. It's a slip fit internal type implant. It's not gonna be internal hex. It's internal, but with unique connection. The body is tapered and there is a round apex. If you take a closer look, there is micro thread. There is a very fine micro thread. Based on these information, you can utilize what implant is that.com or the booklet that I've just introduced or other database. This implant is from previously LifeCore. It's now known as Keston Dental. It was found out to be Renova tapered implant. And this information was delivered. In this image, if you look at the most right implant, it's been newly placed. On the left is existing implant. The person was curious about what this implant was. Within the implant, internal type abutment is in. There's more steeper structure here. This is a very common internal type, internal hex more tapered implant. On top, micro thread pitch is smaller. It is suspected to be internal submerged type implant, but there are many different variations of this type. So it's difficult to pinpoint to which. More information is needed to really pinpoint to what. On the top of the abutment screw, there's bevel. The bevel is among awesome implants traits based on the overall information, we came to a conclusion that it was GS implant, which was introduced before TS implant. When we receive inquiries, even with just X-ray image, or just with periapical x-ray image, some implants have very specific macro structure. Therefore, you can easily discern which implant it is from which manufacturer. BioRise implant has square thread. Bicon implant has a friction fit connection. Chemlock implant has tri-channel on top. Freelit 2 of dense ply is very characteristic among non-submerged type. The thread is like a fish thorn. This is Zimmer's Swiss Plus tapered Swiss Plus implant, the Primaplex. Hex implant, Poimet's Atlas implant. If you see them a couple of times, it is very easy to discern them and it's not difficult to identify these implants. When we receive these kind of inquiries, we can answer them almost right away. 
The most frequently used implant is internal submerged type implant, and most number of inquiries involve around this implant. In Austin, it is a TS3, TS4, or KS implant. Among Korean manufacturers, there are many types of internal submerged type implants. And on X-ray image, there are many different options available. So with just X-ray image, based on the thread or taper, it is very difficult to identify which implant it is from which company. Someone earlier asked about this, the shape of thread, pitch, and coronal feature needs to be factored in in identifying the implant. We need to catch these different traits. The abutment screw length among internal type implant, the screw length differ by manufacturer and the screw head design also differ. Also, the size of the hex differ from 1.2, 1.28, 1.27, 1 1.25. The screw driver size differs slightly. The size of the hex and other information needs to be gathered to find the implant with highest probability. There are many difficulties in doing that. Even if high quality information is provided, there are many similar implants. Therefore, when you make an inquiry, you need to get the best quality information and data to be able to get the answer in a more swift and accurate manner. The first way to get good quality information is to take image perpendicular to the long axis of the implant. If you look at the X-ray image on the left only, it is very difficult to figure out what implant it is. Therefore, you need to send an image where the thread is visible and the connection type, the screw length, needs to be visible. In order for it to be visible, you need to take image perpendicular to the long axis of the implant. Good quality data is essential. Based on the information provided, we'd be able to come to a conclusion that it's an implant from Densply, Zybe implant. Among X-ray image, at least one image should be of periapical radiograph. On the left, we can see that it is a non-submerged implant, but the angle is very slanted and thread is not visible. We can assume or suspect a couple of implants, but it is difficult to finger point to which. On the right, it's the same. The thread is shows some characteristics, but the apex area is not visible. If you can see the apex, you can see that there is a round hole and based on the thread of form, we can assume that it is an implant from stereos. The first important thing is to take image perpendicular to the long axis of the implant so that the thread is visible. Second periapical image needs to be taken. When we read the periapical x-ray image, there's a round apical hole. The hole needs to be parallel for us to be able to see that circle shape. If it is 90 degrees tilted, it is shown like this. The hole here, it's the same. It has circular shape, but it is shown in a radiolucent line. It's the same here. Depending on whether the radiolucent line is towards the buccal side or mesiodistally, it may be shown like the top or the bottom. The apical hole needs to be read like this. The right is the same. If you look at the right image on top, you can see the apical hole. It is shown in translucent line. It's the same with the bottom image as well. There's an oblong hole here. In the top right, 
the image shows the hole. This is Zimmer's tapered screw implant. And on the left, as shown in yellow, there is the oblong hole. This is Zimmer's adventive implant. Third is the quality of X-ray image. As shown on the right, if the image is blur and the quality is low, no one will be able to tell what implant it is. This image does not really help in finding the right implant. If you look at the panoramic X-ray image, at times, if it shows a specific feature, you can easily tell what implant it is. But with just panoramic image, it is almost close to impossible to find the right implant. Panoramic image as well as periapical image should be sent to be able to identify the implant. If you send a blur panoramic image, it is finding out to what car it is in an image like this or finding out to what the car is with just the teaser image shown on the right. The periapical image is a very good one sh shown here on the case of right. From the platform to the apex, the implant is shown well and it is taken in a perpendicular manner to the long axis of the implant. In the case of left, the apex is cut off, therefore it would be more ideal if periapical image could be sent together. Fortunately, the three types of implant are shown here, even without the periapical image, with the traits shown in the superstructure. We were able to identify the implant and provide an answer. In the case of right, it is element implant from SPI implant. The implant fractured in the left is dense plies AstraTech Osseo Speed. In the middle is SIC, SIC Max, and on the left is root line from Chemlock. If the quality is good and if thread is clearly visible, and the platform is very well shown, it is more easy to find the implant. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, if there are unique traits within oral cavities such as a slip joint connection or a third type of connection other than external internal hex, if it is color-coded or a unique structure exists, you need to take the image of oral cavity to be able to identify the implant if it has specific traits even without x-ray image just using the oral cavity image you'll be able to identify the implant sending such information would be of great help or you can also send in information like this by using driver of 0.038 or 0.05 if fit perfectly. This kind of information would help too. Additionally, information such as when and where the implant was placed could help us indeed. Information such as the origin of the implant and when it was placed could be of use in finding the implant. This is a case where inquiry was made. Even with just x-ray image, I can find the implant, but if you send in the image of a clinical photo, if you expand, it is internal submerged type implant. If you look at the clinical photo, it is not the traditional hex. Taking a closer look, as shown on the image, there's six lobes. It has Torx structure. It has a very unique connection. This is SM submerged type from company D. If you provide additional information along with X-ray image, it would help us in finding the implant in an easier manner. Let's look at clinical cases. In August 2020, 
Dr. Kang Yino sent over the case. If you look at the panoramic image on the left and periapical image in the right, you can tell that the three implants in the platform area, it has very similar structure. The thread shape is slightly different, but you can assume that these are from the same implant company. It has color. It is non-submerged type implant. It has tapered body. The one in the middle is slightly straight. The design of the thread is very unique. It is reverse buttress design and pitch is quite tight and at times there's more distance. Two different types of pitch exist. There's no apical hole. Based on the information given, I looked into the matter. This is Zimmer's tapered Swiss Plus and straight Swiss Plus implant. The one in the middle, the pitch distance is slightly further away. It is 1.2 millimeter. This is straight Swiss Plus. The one on the left and right are similar, but the pitch distance is narrower. This is tapered Swiss Plus. So the question you come to have is where and how you can get the components. What we provide is identifying which implant it is from which company. Dr. Kang Ino realized that it was not easy to get the right component. Therefore, the abutment that the patient had was removed and prepped. The dentist determined that it could be used as the abutment and impression was taken. New prosthesis was fabricated. This case was shared by Dr. Yi Ju Hwan. X-ray image was shared. The implant was not used by Dr. Yi Ju Hwan. The X-ray image was of excellent quality and we were able to immediately identify that this was IS2 from N company. This has very unique trade in the coronal area. The thread shape is quite unique. Therefore, if you send the right X-ray image, we can easily identify which it is from which implant company. The dentist ordered the coping, impression was taken, custom abutment and prosthesis was delivered to the patient. This is my case in February 2017. As you can see in the panoramic image, the patient came in as shown. On this side, there were two implants and on the other side, there were three implants, but one implant failed after two to three years. In the second implant in the lower right, the body fractured and only one implant remained. As you can see, there's only one surviving implant. I'm not going to talk about the treatment plan. As shown here on yellow, I decided to use that. If you expand the panoramic image, vaguely you can assume that this is external connection type. In the case of external type implant, some manufacturers have one millimeter height in the hex area, but in general, most of them has 0 0.7 millimeter height. The regular type has hex of 2.7 and wide type of 3.4. The implant with a 0 0.7 millimeter height, regardless of which implant it is, it is compatible with Austin's US type prosthesis. As you can see on the right, there's color coding. The implants with height of one millimeter, these are available from various manufacturers. If it is otherwise, you can assume that it will be mostly compatible with a regular or wide 0 0.7 millimeter external US implant components. These components were used to place another implant in the distal area. Because the mesial implant was external type, I used external type and it was connected using bridge and treatment was completed in this way. 
This is also my patient. In upper number 7 and 7, and missing area implants were placed through periodontal treatment. Overall periodontal conditions were improved. And number 36 was improved. In the x-ray, you can see the radiolucent line. It was fractured and the patient brought it in to the dental clinic. In the x-ray image, what we can tell is that this is the border between implant and the abutment. Because abutment goes in like this, it is internal type. It's not more taper. It goes in with slip joint. It has a slip fit connection. There is micro thread. The thread is reverse buttress thread. It is unique. No prominent implants locally matched with the description as shown here. I looked at what this implant was and I made an inquiry into the Korea Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology group chat room as mentioned before. A lot of dentists helped me and it was identified as Spider 2 from Company B. Through my associate, I was able to get my hands on the impression coping. I took impression, made custom abutment, and made prosthesis. This was how the prosthesis was completed. Based on my understanding, this company continued to produce products for long term, but now it's out of service. In this case, as Professor Cho has mentioned, even though it is end of service, if components are available for long term afterwards, that would be ideal, but in most cases, that is not the case. I think it is very important for companies to provide components for long term. I've talked about many cases, many inquiries are being made to the identification of implant service. When questions are around currently available implants, we feel at ease, but when inquiries involve products that are out of service, even if we identify the implant, we are unsure as to how to get the components to the right dentist. I think we need to build consensus on this issue and manufacturers should also consider this factor. To summarize, in order to provide prosthesis again for the implant that I have not placed, I think it is important whether we can reutilize the existing implant. If it is a system that I'm used to, it's not a problem. But if you're foreign to the existing implant system, we need to look at the different traits by looking at the x-ray image and clinical image. Using the many methods that I've mentioned, you need to utilize them in identifying the implant. If you cannot figure it out by yourself, you can raise questions to the Kaomi service. The directors as well as myself will, will consult with you and help you to find the right implant. When you make inquiries, as mentioned, you need to provide good quality periapical x-ray image. If you can provide more information involving patient's dental history or others, it would help in identifying the implant for you. This service has been available for four or five years, and as I've prepared my lecture, I came to have this wish of manufacturers not making and ending production of certain implants just because of popularity. Rather being swayed by trends, I hope manufacturers stick by consistent implant systems. In addition, even if implant production needs to halt for whatever reason, I hope there's a archive or digital library where the relevant information are stored. I believe the necessity to provide treatment with patients with existing implants will increase more dramatically in the future. Therefore, if necessary, if we can utilize such database archive, it will be of great help. We need to manage it in a structured manner.
This is the end of my lecture. It's very clinically meaningful. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Thank you. Dr. Cho, previously we addressed some of the questions. Following that momentum, we will look at the real chat. Head guy 12. The size of the hex on top of the implant platform, does it differ depending on implant diameter and implant manufacturer? This was mentioned. In most cases, it is unified at 0.7 millimeters. Some manufacturers have one millimeter height. In the case of one millimeter, it is not compatible. Good evening. Even if you identify the implant, it may be difficult to find the abutment for it. In this case, you need to utilize generic abutment made by the lab or some tools from certain companies. In this case, the fit and strength and other quality issues may arise. It's a very qu practical question. If you know exactly what product it is from which manufacturer, you can use custom abutment provided by the manufacturer or use a stock abutment. That is the best way. If this is unlikely, there can be error compared with original product, but you cannot remove the implant body just because of it. In this case, you need to use the copy inevitably. ID Moby Dick. If there's no hole on the uh, prosthesis it, on the x ray image, it is difficult to discern whether it is a one type or two piece abutment screw. It is very difficult to remove the PFM bridge implant prosthesis. Yes, it's a very cumbersome if there's no screw hole on the prosthesis. If it looks like the cementation type, an oral cavity. I think the person is having difficulty whether it is one piece or two piece type, but if you take a periapical image properly, you can look at the standard x-ray image and discern whether it is one piece or two piece. Between abutment and abutment screw, if it is one piece, there is no gap. If it is two piece, there is a radiolucent line. If you look at it closely, if you take high quality x-ray image, you can identify whether it is one piece or two piece implant. Thank you. One second, please. Daily checkup. What you're explaining is private service provided for a fee. If there's a public service, that receives data from implant companies and provides the collected data in a public way, that'll be better. Can't this be provided by the Korea Dental Association? Can Kaomi suggest this? I think this is a very ideal opinion. This is something not just a private company can manage, and if this can be handled by the association, that would be very ideal. Jack, Jack, is there a data where there is a summary of implant companies that are compatible? These data are privately made and summary shared, but even if it is the same type of implant, Visually, it may look as if it's compatible with impression coping, but if you take a precise image, the fit as well as other issues may be noticed because no product is 100% compatible with each other. Because of time constraint, we will not be able to entertain all the questions, so we will take one or two more questions and the rest will be addressed via reply. Shin 8234, if there has been screw loosening for a long period, there will be wear on the inner surface of the implant, even if you tighten using new screw abutment. Screw loosening can occur 
Again, in this case, how can we predict the prognosis? I think this is off topic. It's about complications. Uh, this will be addressed in a different lecture. Then all. In the case of cement type crown without a hole, if the patient comes in with chief complete of mobility, be it due to screw loosening, hex fracture, or implantering, if it is difficult to remove it, how should I approach it? This is not a 100% answer, but to give you a brief answer, if there's mobility due to screw loosening, and when there is mobility due to a Bauman hex fracture, the tendency of mobility is different. This is not something that I can explain verbally, but if you use your fingers to move the prosthesis on abutment buccolingually, the tactile sense is different. In the case of abutment hex fracture, something may feel like it's attached and it's almost about to fall off, but in the case of screw fracture, it feels very loose. Based on your experience, you'd be able to learn how to respond differently. In the end, the same solution should be applied to both the situations. I think this is really interesting and meaningful lecture. I'm writing down notes. Red Cherry 1. Is there any traits where I can differentiate the anatomical form of implant prosthesis by implant? I think the person is asking by implant type. The most notable type is non-submerged type and submerged type, internal and external types. Even in the case where you're not addressing existing implants, after placing implant, if you take a periapical image of the implants, you'll be able to discern the differences, whether it is internal type, external type, non-submerged type. With practice, you'll be able to tell the difference. That's true. Because of time constraint, we will now end Q&A session and the rest of the questions will be addressed via the chat. Okay. A lot of people have participated in today's chat. I really appreciate it. Now we will select the best question among the question raised in Prosthodontics on Friday. The person selected as the best question will receive three Starbucks coupons. Dr. Cho, can you choose the best question? I'd like to give the best question gift to ID Ryongryong, who has raised the question early on. ID Ryongryong, congratulations. Coffee coupons will be sent on Monday. Don't feel too let down for not being the winner today. The chat event continues on in the next lecture as well, and I look forward to your interest. Dr. Cho, could you give a word of advice to your peers who have studied long and hard up until late watching Prosthodontics on Friday Live? As mentioned, identifying the existing implant and providing prosthesis once again to the existing implant. These necessity are increasing. The need for identification of implant service has risen. We have been providing service for four years and inquiries are increasing. One thing I want to mention is that although I have mentioned this Repeatedly during my lecture, you need to get as much information from the patient, the dental history, good quality x-ray image, and clinical image should be sent for us to be able to provide a swift and accurate answer. When you make an inquiry, please provide as much information as possible. Thank you for providing wonderful lecture despite your busy schedule and providing wonderful answers. Viewers of Prosthodontics on Friday, did you like the Prosthodontics on Friday seminar with Dr. Cho Yong Jin? 
I believe you are able to learn a lot about identifying existing implant and to address relevant issues. We were also introduced to Kaomi's implant identification service and we were able to get many meaningful tips. The questions that were not answered today will be addressed via reply in the next lecture. Professor Lee Gyubok of Gyeongbuk University Dental School will provide a lecture under the title Why do I always worry first when there is no hole in the implant occlusal table? Thank you for being with us until late. Thank you.